Thank you for coming, uh, everyone. My name is Ana Paula. I'm international fellow from Brazil. Oops. And this is my backyard during the last six years. This is Amazon rainforest. Uh, here at WFI, I try to explore more tools uh, about payments for ecosystem service. So I will introduce a, a, a very special place. So uh, Brazil is located in Latin America and we border uh, all the South American countries um, except Ecuador and Chile. And in terms of area, Brazil represents 87% of the US territory or 33 times the, organs, uh, the size of Oregon state. So that means we are huge. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of uh, forest resources, uh, the accord with FAO, five countries have 54% of the forest land uh, around the world. In Brazil, have 12% of this global forest area. So this, uh, this represents 50-80% uh, of Brazil and the area. So we are huge and we have a lot of forest. So in terms of the forest characters, we could classify our forest in two types. 2% uh, is provided from planted forest and 98% uh, is from natural forest. So I think for this reason, I worked the last six years in the Amazon rainforest with the local government uh, try to implement incentives for ecosystem service uh, to reduce the deforestation and increase um, income from uh, vulnerable people, uh, such as traditional communities and uh, indigenous tribes. So just to be on the same page, uh, ecosystem service is the benefit that the people obtain from the ecosystem. Generically, they are um, classified in three categories, provision, regulating, and cultural service. So they could be climate regulation, wood, or just food. So in payment for ecosystem service is the incentives, usually money, that we offer to landowners uh, for management their land in exchange for some of this type of ecological service. So here at WFI, I focus my research in this, um, in this uh, economic instrument. And I have an opportunity to see, uh, for the first time, three different tools under this umbrella. So the first one, it was conservation easement. So um, private uh, land have a lot of uh, rights, could be uh, water, carbon development. Uh, and conservation easement is when an organization or institution buy one of these um, these rights with the purpose to preserve it in the perpetuity. So uh, usually for restoration areas, uh, what we saw is an example uh, with uh, um, development rights. So in terms of uh, restoration, uh, these two, uh, it's considered efficient tool from the top and bottom line view and in terms of environmental aspects, the restoration contributes to climate change because you're restoring land, uh, landscapes and degraded areas with native species. In terms of uh, economic uh, aspects, restoration is very, very expensive. So you could transfer this responsibility to the land trust and at the same time earn some money with the sale. And uh, in terms of social aspects, improve uh, restoration could improve wildlife and uh, also make it possible continue some social activities such as recreation, hunting, and fishing. So it's just to, to, to show some pictures. If you, if you say oh, the right developing rights in your property uh, for conservation, you cannot uh, change the land use forever. Another tool that I saw here for the first time is voluntary carbon projects. We went uh, to the city of Astoria. They have uh, forest land and they do harvest timber there. 
and they decide to improve forest management to increase uh, carbon stock. And a few years ago, they traded this carbon credits in a voluntary market. So in terms of environmental aspects, uh, forests remove uh, carbon uh, from the atmosphere and contribute to mitigating climate change. And at the same time, a forest helps to preserving watershed areas that uh, um, supply clean water for the citizen from Astoria. And with the income that the city obtained from the trade of the carbon credits, around the $2 million, they use it to invest in public services, such as local libraries, city parks, and fire trucks. So this is the example that we saw in Astoria City. And the last that I could see here is a direct public payment. Uh, in this case, uh, landowners receive uh, payments from the government uh, to increase or maintain forest cover. The example that I saw here, it was from Costa Rica. Uh, Costa Rica is considered a pioneer to implement uh, payments for ecosystem service. And landowners are allowed to receive payments for ecosystem service by or from two activities, forest conservation or reforestation. So in terms of reforestation, commercial plantation, the payments are uh, for ecosystem service are additional um, to incomes from the forest product sales. So consequently, they help to improve the cash flow. Um, this is just an uh, example that happened in Costa Rica. Uh, so <laughs> now, uh, I'm thinking, I left my, uh, to think in, in um, locally, and after the six months, I'm, I'm thinking globally. But um, I'm glad to, to know all these different tools here, and what I will uh, return or try to apply in my country now, that the concept, so development rights can help restore uh, deforestated areas in developing countries. And today could be Brazil, and tomorrow could be Bolivia or other countries. But at the same time, uh, Brazil and Pacific Northwest, we have the same issues. So financial resources from the government or and no profit entities is not enough, because in the end of the project, you needed to, to know the door, require more, more money for, uh, to continue your activity. So um, we think that the private sector could fill in the gap because, you know, they, they manage in more than $100 trillion. So let's do this together. Thank you very much.